Dell XPS 8960. I am back with the Dell Advanced Tower Cooler. If you watched the previous video, we were able to compare the Dell standard cooler for this i7 13 gen uh, non k equipped PC. Uh, this is what it came with. It was a Black Friday deal. So this is called a pancake stock cooler or a laughing stock or a joke. And uh, you, you have to have the tower cooler or you have to have the pump because the pump is so much better than this laughing stock and even significantly better than a tower cooler. Uh, you're losing a lot of performance if you don't have a pump. So uh, let's get to it. Let's see if there's any truth in it. If you watched the previous video, then you already know that with the i7 non-K CPU, uh, this thing is five to 8% slower only uh, compared to the pump. These are all Dell options. All you have to have is a long screwdriver to replace. There's, you, don't, you don't have to have long bolts, uh, washers, uh, mounting holes. You don't have to cut anything out or modify. In that case, you don't have to pull the motherboard out. Everything works. These are all the Dell options which you can get with the Dell XPS Tower. So, uh, as you can see in here, we have an aluminum a cooler a circle it's not even covering the whole entire size of the cpu this is the 13 gen i7 which just came out of this pc uh, and it will go back because we only do on a test as you can see the dell advanced tower cooler has a copper core uh, significantly covering the whole entire size of the cpu so uh, significantly larger this thing is a beast i i haven't seen this i had no pre preconception how this thing gonna look like and I'm shocked. This is almost two pounds, close to one kilogram. It is, it is a giant. And this is the Dell option, what you can get if you have a K CPU when you purchase this PC. Then you're gonna have a, a tower cooling system, and for a fifty dollar upcharge, you can have the pump. Uh, obviously, the pump is also covering. I left the other uh, thermal paste on it, so you can see that it covers everything. Again, the advantage to go with these all then Dell options with a single screwdriver without any modification in minutes, you can replace any of these coolers. When I looked into the tower cooler, I made a mistake. Uh, this was on eBay and it was listed as comparable with the XPS. It costed around $20, $25. However, it's not. As you can see, we only have six uh, heat pipes and a significantly smaller uh, cooler. The problem is this the the distance between the mounting screws are about a quarter inch shorter than the dell advanced cooler so this is for a previous generation or generations uh, when i looked at the picture it looked nice it's significantly better obviously i haven't had a real deal when you look at the two it's the difference is it's pretty obvious so if you're looking at this on ebay with a six copper pipe this is for a previous generation not for the 8960 I will be able to reuse this uh, at one point on, on an older Optiplex, which is, I think, going to be actually great. So, uh, back to these guys. Uh, this is about $80 on Amazon. It has 4.8 star reviews. Uh, I ended up going with this because of the quick shipping. Uh, one thing you're probably going to notice uh, if I do this slowly. Uh, one thing is missing from here. And uh, when you go to Amazon... Uh, on the picture, it will indicate that this will have the Dell uh, model number on it, just like you see on this and on the pump as well. You see all the Dell model numbers and uh, identifications this doesn't have. On Amazon, it is showing you the picture that this has the Dell part number and the Dell logo on it, and it is it is not. So, not that the Dell logo, but the Dell uh, little... Uh, QR code and a model number and all that stuff. So this is either a counterfeit or an aftermarket uh, uh, product. So the, the Dell thing looks exactly the same, the same specs, same size. As much as I can tell you, everything is the same, except, I don't know, maybe they're making this in the same uh, factory when they make a Dell, except they're not stamping it as Dell. Uh, one thing about this fan and the pump, there are... Topics at Dell.com, somebody has a pump with a key uh, CPU complaining that it's noisy and Dell is going to install the tower cooler to replace uh, the pump. 
other people complaining that this tower cooler is noisy and they will buy the pump and that's going to be so much better uh, also some people pointing it out i don't think without any knowledge that the, this pump is the best overall because the pump is 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 uh it's give you the biggest performance boost and you're leaving a lot of performance on a table with the air cooler options uh not true at least not with the i7 non-k even with this you're not losing too much because this is only five to eight percent slower than any of these two so let's jump into the performance measurements and uh, let's see what we have here with the tower cooler the difference between the tower cooler and a pancake cooler is exactly the same as the difference between the pancake and the pump these two performing with the i7 non-k exactly the same some uh, case this thing is a half a percent slower in other cases one percent faster than the pump some people injecting their thoughts or their preconception uh, with the pump uh, saying like just because it's a liquid cooling option it's much cooler uh, it has to be significantly better but but just a reminder this is what we normally use uh, twice as big in a custom gaming pc because this mini system technically this is the only thing fits in and it's manufactured by dell we have about a half of the size of the radiator only vent one fan versus two fans so it, it cannot be the blast what we normally see on a on a gaming pc so this is a half of the size of the cooling system so there are advantage with all three of them even with this thing if you're somebody who purchased the pc just for a daily browser just for a computer to do little things uh not power hungry applications this is the quietest option when i use a sound meter uh, you're going to be able to see that when this thing is idling and a pc is just browsing or doing lightweight work nothing coming out of this thing the sound meter just constantly shuts off on the 2d decibel and i'm putting the sound meter here at the lowest point and none of us are gaming or using a pc like this so if you have your gaming pc in front of you on the desk and you're not re it's not it's actually not even a gaming pc it's a designer uh, pc or or anything above it's a creative pc but it can run games so if you somebody who just using a pc casually uh, this thing is a quietest option this this is a quietest option when it's not throttled when you start pushing this this fan will go up to 60 70 decibel and will become the loudest or the noisiest option between all three when the tower cooler is installed and idling i can hear a little bit of fan noise but not uh, the fan noise like the fan is cutting through air it's almost like a very subtle very quiet rattling noise uh, which is crazy uh, so i cannot tell if this is the case i cannot buy multiple of these like linus or any of the big channel just to just to rule it out uh, and and i don't see the dell uh, stamping in here which i would love to see for 80 bucks like this is just uh it's gonna be a return so with the sound meter as you can see on the top of the case the idling is very subtle very quiet 34 35 decibel when you start pushing this this is a more civilized option it only goes up to about uh, 45 decibel then the throttling kicks in and shuts down so it's about half of the sound uh, the sound what we're getting from the little pancake well the pump is also have a little bit of pump sound if the pump uh, is up on a desk and we're putting the sound meter right here just like we did in the other two cases we're gonna see 34 35 decibel constant when we start pushing the computer the pump goes up one decibel and that's it uh, it's it's the quietest option between all three if you're really gaming or really editing or really pushing the cpu so that uh, i have to give you that well how much is a pump uh, after uh, you purchase the pc like as you can see this was about 80 bucks on amazon 25 dollars on ebay starts from 25 with the same thing i'm assuming it's going to be the non dell stamped part and this thing uh is around 166 dollars on amazon i don't know how much that is even charging you uh for this p uh, for this pump if they're selling it separately uh it was a 65 dollar on ebay open box item uh great love it 
So just to put the final nail in this coffin, regards of uh, these cooling options, uh, we're only gonna focus on these two, the tower and a pump. Uh, the, again, the 14 gen i9 K version, it's already here. It's, it's already up and running. I'm gonna put one of the, uh, the coolers back in a case and start pushing the test and see what kind of performance are we getting and see what's gonna be the difference. If you have any preconception, have any guesses, feel free to leave it in a comment section. Let me know. And also, uh, this thing takes so much time. If you could just hit the like button and maybe even subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, that would help to, to push this video a little forward than it's normal. I, I would really, really uh, appreciate that. So... I'm going to put this in, hopefully middle of next week this will come out and finally set this debate to rest. If the pump is so much better uh, than the tower cooler, it also comes down to your previous uh, uh, belief that what is the best option for you. If somebody, this PC can start at $799, right now it's $850 without a dedicated video card. If you just need a solid desktop with an i7 non-K CPU, this could be a great daily driver for years to come. The build quality is awesome. So if you have a pancake cooler and somebody's telling you that you're a sore loser because you don't have a pump, uh, not true. You're barely leaving anything on a table if you're not pushing this PC. That thing is still good. Dell has an army of engineers and not relying on YouTubers or armchair experts. They know what they're doing. It's a, it's a, it's a cheap option uh, to keep the cost down at, at least stepping into the XPS. I'm not trashing that cooler. It's significantly better than what it looks like even when it's on the table between these parts. It it's, it's looks weird in here, but as you can see, uh, with the i7, the performance difference is 5 to 8%, not a lot. So let's uh, crank up the i9, the 14 Gen i9 K, and see what's going to be the difference without any uh, overclocking. And then we're going to try to overclock and see if there is a bigger difference uh, between the two. Really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions uh, before I ran this, uh, test, please let me know in a comment section if you wanna. If you want me to include any kind of test software, which makes sense. When I asked this previously, some of you pointed out like, oh, there is a there's a PI calculator, and, and I looked it into it, and and uh, and the numbers are coming out as a billions. So I, I don't want to work with a 50 billion Cinebench uh, going to give us a three digit or four digit uh, end result, which is comparable or maybe a five digit in 3D mark. It's easier to work with these numbers, easier to see what's the difference than if you go into the billions. So yeah, again, thank you so much for your time and I'll see you at the next video. Scott's out.